March the 25th, 2019. Guys, you're looking back in November 28, 2013, as Comet I-Sun was approaching the sun. Now, as it, many people thought it was going to hit the sun, and we waited until it appeared out the other side, and it had disintegrated into what we call a meteor shower. It's probably the only recording of how a meteor shower forms. Now, when it comes, notice also the electrical connection between the sun and the comet their opposite polarities it's an electric universe they were throwing out extremely powerful solar flares and chronal mass ejections that stripped the tail off of it but each of those arms in that v spread out for 20 million miles at the same time comet inky was uh, being seen on the satellites now it disintegrated like that a long time ago they have calculated that this comet, 2P Inky, is responsible for most of all of the meteor showers. As it has come around the sun at different times, it must have been huge originally, or this is the remnants of something even larger. But they can go back and trace the different meteor showers that would go through, and Inky is responsible for, I think, almost all of them. Now, the way that it crosses, and you notice your timestamp, I started it as of today, it has about a 3.3 year orbital period. Now, it's it comes just outside the orbit of Mercury, the closest planet, then goes back almost out to Jupiter, which is the uh, orange line, and then comes back in. Now, what it's left over the years is the exact trail of the toward meteor showers. Notice that it went as it went in, it crossed the uh, planet's uh, path of Earth. And as it came back out, so you got the June towards and you got the November towards that we go through two of these a year. Now, they're saying that uh, towards stream is a bit tricky to visualize in this report, guys. It, and I have a point for doing all this, but that's why I showed you the elliptical path of Comet Inky because they follow that path because they are part of the debris trail. Now, let's get into kind of more of the meat of this video. Going back to June 30th, 1908, many of you are aware of it, probably every one of you, of the Tunguska event. It happened above Siberia. It says an object the size of an apartment building came hurling out of the sky and exploded in the atmosphere above there. The Tunguska event, named for a river, flattened trees for 800 square miles. Now, it occurred in one of the least populated places in Asia. The Tunguska airburst stands as the most powerful impact event in recorded human history. Now, this is modern recorded history, and it remains enigmatic as scientists don't know the origin of the object or whether it was an asteroid or a comet. But guys, uh, they're estimating now that it was one of the June or Beta Taurus because of the date and the direction of the tree fall as they looked at those old pictures. And uh, they determine again that's the same angle as the toward June meteor showers, the betas. Now look at the bottom paragraph. Some years Earth passes near the densest cluster of material in the toward stream. And 2019 will be such a year. The scientists say it presents potentially the richest batch of incoming material since 1975. It says uh, when there was a record spike in impacts on the moon during the Torrid shower. Some of the most spectacular fireballs come from the Torrids. It's not the most, but some of them are very large. Now, in this article, it says that uh, NASA's JPL, through NEACAM, which is an infrared space telescope, they've identified more than 90% of the objects that are large enough to cause a global scale disaster. Now, they're not saying any of these are supposed to hit the Earth anytime soon, but we're not talking global scale in what we are looking at. Now, this possibly has happened about 12,000 years ago, but it says, but moving down the scale size, the census uh, is far spottier. Only about 30% of medium-sized objects, 140 meters, 460 feet in diameter or larger, have been spotted, and she... Uh, the lady Amy Manzer said that uh, only about 1% of objects have been found that are the size of the Tunguski impactor. 1% have been found, which was about 40 meters, 130 feet in diameter. She said she welcomed the idea of a special effort to look for objects during the Tard Swarm in June. 
So they are watching this event, guys. That's why I'm doing it, because of the June warning that we're going through a thicker part. Now, if you look at this and you go back through history, there are several points that indicate that this is what happened in the cataclysmic event on Earth 12,000 years ago that wiped out the woolly mammoths. And uh, again, I've talked about that in videos from for the last few years, and we'll take a look at that. But remember, 140 meters, 460 feet. Now remember, 460 feet for the 30%, the 1% like Tunguska, 130 feet wide rocks was estimated. Now this inf information on Inky, and it uh, talks about one of the objects inside of it right here. It's part of the meteor storm. It's uh, near Earth object 2045. This thing is estimated to be by the infrared survey explorer or nasa's wide field neowise 1.36 kilometers guys that's 0.81 almost 0.9 miles wide not 130 feet so there are large i mean large objects inside this meteor storm and uh, i just i just wanted to point it out it's not a fear-mongering video now let's go back 12,000 years ago and let's look at some places around the planet that received tremendous damage. Possibly it ended the wood period of the woolly mammoth. But these are the Carolina Bays along the eastern shores of the U.S. And uh, they have traced back all of these millions of impacts to two places where they struck. Again, I've done videos called the Carolina Bay Series. And across the U.S., they... The, once they struck in the large ice cap that covered the upper U.S., it created all the impact points. Some of them are full of water, but these that you don't see are from infrared imaging, and they're in the fields and some of the, uh, it's all across the area, but you can tell the impact points, and if they trace back from where the high point is, from where the mud was pushed up on one side, they trace them back again to from Canada to the northern U.S., different impact zones all through here as we came through some type of meteor shower. The Algonquin Native American tribe, guys, has a legend that goes back 12,000 years ago. They've been here a long time. That they watched a, a meteor shower approach. They bury themselves in the rivers, in the mud, the ones that survive, and they watch the impact as the top of the mountains and the giant trees burned, and they said it killed all the large animals. And then they watched it, part of it that didn't impact the earth retreat back into space. Now, Brian Forrester, he's done series about this around the world 12,000 years ago. Remember Puma, Punka, and Bolivia? Destruction, Twelve that same time. 12,000 years ago as the Carolina Bays in the U.S. Here in the Nile Delta of Egypt, also Brian Forster, talking about the destruction that occurred at that time. And it leads not only there, but you go to Lebanon, Baalbek. There was utter destruction there. and it, This was not done by the Romans. This is ancient megalithic structure that... Uh, was one of the landing zones besides Mount Hermon that the fallen angels are in the Anunnaki Sumerian text. The, that group of Marduk and his men that came in and kidnapped the earth women and married them. They were going to kill everybody if they didn't let them do it. They had the technology then, but there was heat that blasted through these areas wasn't just impact. This is also, this is the uh, Sun Temple, I think, there in Baalback. Ancient uh, work. The top part was Roman. The bottom part was way older than that. And the way that these rocks, and again, this is 12,000 years ago, Peru, Brian Forrester, they explained that uh, the only way rocks flake like this is being uh, exposed to extreme heat or high blast. It's not natural corrosion. That, that heat peels off the layers of the stone that were exposed. And in that video, you can see the other side of the building was flat. Now, this is one of the torrents that came in November. And again, in June, they will have some of the large ones. So that's what you'll see at night. Now, the June torrents are notorious for not being seen because 
they are between the earth and the sun for a good part of the period now in other countries you see more of the june ones but and again because the sun the satellites are blind and, and so are we because when you're looking into the sun that's where the most asteroids come that are not detected simply because you can't see them but guys i talked about doing this video so i guess the main point was that this june coming up the uh, tard betas we're going to be going through a much denser field of rocks and again they go from the asteroid that was almost a mile wide down to 160 foot rocks like tunguska we're watching it guys it's a heads up be safe